Uh, Gary, I was asking, what, what are your impressions of each of the running backs you've had in spring, either from what you've been able to see in practice or on film as you were studying them, with Jalen, Isaac, Julius, and Brady? Uh, I think all four of those guys have uh, a unique skill set. Um, I hadn't been able to watch them on film before I got here, but being that I've had them in practice a few times, I've been able to see that they've been able to grow uh, with some of the teaching. Some of the stuff I'm teaching may be a little different than what they're used to, uh, but they all have the skill set to go out and gain yards in the offense that we're going to run. Um, very excited working with all those guys. I think all those guys can, can have a, a niche in what we want to do. Um, obviously, one is going to separate from another when spring you know, clarifies itself and fall clarifies itself. But uh, I'm very excited about all four of those guys. Cool. Hey, Gary, I was wondering what attracted you to this job? I know you were out of football last year, but just wanted to, what was it about the Wisconsin job and this opportunity that uh, made you want to come here? Well, we all know that they've had a rich tradition of running backs. Uh, if you're a student of the game and you watch the game, uh, you understand that Wisconsin runs the ball. Uh, and what, what other place would a running back coach want to be where they're going to run the rock? So uh, that's where you want to be. That's where, uh, you know, when I talked to Coach Chris and, you know, her and I talked on the phone, uh, it just felt like a good place for me, a great place to, to, to come back uh, and reestablish myself as a coach in this game. And uh, I'm just glad they gave me an opportunity to do that. Jeff? Gary, can you take us through, it hasn't been a usual transition where you start the year on the same staff. You kind of came in late. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you didn't get a chance to look at those guys on tape. What that's been, what has that been like to try to get your feet under you and get comfortable? Well, it's been really good. Uh, I was in Dallas for seven straight seasons. So uh, this, the off season was kind of, uh, I don't want to say easy, but I knew the offense. I knew the players. Uh, yeah, we were drafting guys going to combine. So it was kind of like I was in autopilot at, in Dallas for seven years. So in this situation where I didn't know anybody, I didn't know the offense, I didn't know anything, was exciting to me because now I'm back into the student mode and now I'm I'm learning and I'm trying to get the terminology down. I'm trying to learn the players and their all their different uh, little ins and outs on how they do things and the coaches and all that. And it was it's been very exciting. Listen, I'm not even close to where I need to be, but I'm going in the right direction. Steve. Just wondering for you what the biggest adjustment is going from between coaching and the NFL level and then being back in the college ranks now. And I was wondering, was this something was this something that appealed to you to go back to college or is it just a case where it was this particular opportunity going to Wisconsin that appealed to you? Well, I think uh, I guess you can say yes on both ends. I think uh, it's always been intriguing to me to go back to college. Like I said, I've been in, I was in the NFL for 11 years. Uh, started off in college. Uh, so it's always been intriguing to me to, to maybe go back to college one day. Uh, well, when this opportunity came along, uh, it's one you can't turn down, uh, especially, like I said, with the tradition of running backs, uh, how they run the football, uh, how they do the things here. Uh, you've heard, you know, in, in the ranks of, you know, the NFL and you're at combines, you're talking to guys, Wisconsin's always one of those schools that's talked about that does it the right way, uh, not only uh, academically, but athletically. So, uh, you just want to be a part of those types of, of programs. George. Hey, Gary, welcome to Madison. Um, Thank you. When you were with the Dallas Cowboys, obviously that was the pinnacle of, of running the ball in the NFL. And now you're at the pinnacle of running the ball in college football. What has jumped out to you in your short time here with the Badgers? Maybe that's similar to what you've seen in Dallas or just that's impressed you overall. What I, what, I, what I think has jumped out to me is the way the coaches go about uh, formulating the game plan and formulating the offense. It's, it's been tremendous for me to learn uh, from them guys, those guys. Those guys are tremendous coaches. Uh, they, they have a blend of college, but yet still have some pro feel to it. Uh, so it's a great way to, to run the ball. Uh, I, am, I am totally, totally appreciative of being in this situation because I'm learning some things that I've never learned before. Obviously in the NFL, there's only a few teams that do the RPO thing that do those types of things. So, uh, you know, I'm learning different ways of doing things. So it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Back to Jesse. Gary, Jalen Berger has the most carries in the group. I believe he only played in four games last year and this is just his second year where, first of all, 
what have you noticed about his skill set that, that you can help coach him? And how do you get a younger group ready for the grind of a college football season? Well, I think first with Jalen, I think that uh, just watching him, obviously I went when I got here, I watched some tape, uh, but watching him in practice, he's a very smooth, instinctive runner. Uh, we, you know, he has a lot to learn, but I think he has a skill set to be a three phase running back. And when I say three phase, I mean, can run, catch and pass protect. Uh, so he has those, those type of skill sets. We just have to get it out of him. He's very young. Uh, you know, there's going to be a certain standard that we set in the room that all of them are going to have to live up to. Uh, and they're all going in the right direction. Don't get me wrong. They're all great kids. They're all going in the right direction, uh, but we got a long way to go. Uh, I'm glad that the season not starting next week. Uh, we got some time to, to get ready for Penn state, but um, it's, it's, it's a great situation to be in. It's a great situation to be in. Back to Colton. Kind of similar to what Jesse just asked, but you got a lot of guys in your room that are unproven, right? They haven't played a lot of snaps. They haven't played a lot at this position. Just do you see the, the hunger out of them because of that or a desire to kind of impress when they get on the field? Well, I think it's a combination of hunger and the desire to learn, uh, which is great. Uh, they're like clay. Uh, and like I said earlier about being in the NFL, uh, it was kind of like you taught those guys how to do it. They signed five-year deals and you don't have to teach them much of the offense anymore and they've kind of gotten it these guys are like clay and it's given me an opportunity to mold them the way that coach Christ wants them uh the way that coach Rudy wants them uh and frankly the way I want them so uh we're going to do our best to get them uh in a situation where they're exactly what we want them to be uh and uh so they can help us win games Steve. I'm just wondering, obviously, I can't imagine anybody can go through the health situation you did the last year without changing to some in some respect. I'm just wondering, everything you went through the last year or so, how has that impacted you as a coach? Has it changed you at all one way or the other? Well, I tell you what, it really changed me in the way of realizing that every day is a gift, uh, that what we do is special. What I do is special, whether it's in the NFL or college or wherever, every day is a gift and every day is special. So I think in that regard, it's helped me understand that when I step into the building, uh, I have to give it my best 100% because none of this is promised. Uh, none of the thing is guaranteed. And uh, you just got to go out and take the blessings that you have and make the most of them. I've got time for a couple more. We'll go back to George. Hey, Gary, going back to Jalen, um, do you have any comparison for him for any of the pro backs or any running backs you've been with in your past coaching career when you watch him? Um, I don't want to compare him right now because he's so young. Uh, but I'll tell you this, uh, he is as smooth as a runner of I've, uh, that I've coached as far as his being smooth and being able to get in out of holes and things of that nature. Uh, he reminds me of a, of a young DeMarco when we had him early, he's very smooth. DeMarco is a very smooth runner. Uh, but he was very explosive and very powerful. So that's what we're trying to get Jalen to be. Uh, he will get there. Again, he's young, uh, a couple years in the weight room, a couple years just getting behind the line and, and actually playing football will help him get there. Uh, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be DeMarco, but I'm saying that he has the skill set uh, to be a very good runner. All right, we'll wrap things up for Coach Brown with one more from Jeff. Yeah, Gary, you know, kind of back to your, your comment about learning to appreciate things, um, given your health issues that you've had a battle through. Football has been a big part of your life as a player and a coach. Did you ever reach a point in this process where you thought it's going to be taken away from me before I'm ready to move on to something else? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure you guys know the history I've had. I've had cancer twice, um, you know, 10, 10, 11 years ago or whatever it was or nine or whatever it was. And then just recently, uh, yeah, when you're sitting alone by yourself and you know, you're, you're alone and you're thinking about what's next, you really think about the things that are, could be taken away, not only football, but your family and your friends and all these things. And it, and it, it is going to do one or two things to you. It's either going to eat you up and you're just going to, and you're going to fold up and you're just going to go in a corner and die, or you're going to fight. And my parents raised me to fight. So, you know, that, that was my only, uh, answer to, you know, quote unquote, bad news is to fight and to go out and make sure that you do whatever you need to do uh, to try to be the best you can be. And being the best I could be was trying to fight this disease. And right now, you know, I am 
doing pretty good. So, uh, you know, it's, it, I feel great. Uh, all the numbers are great. Everything is great. Uh, I just got to continue to change my lifestyle with my eating habits and my medicines and things of that nature to continue to go down this road. So I fully intend to do that. Uh, I totally, totally uh, feel like I'm going to be here for another, hopefully, 40, 50 years. We'll live to be 100 and uh, we'll be good to go.